first thing you notice is uh, the cork uh, teaking. Instead of having teak on the boat, we, we put cork, which is actually a very good choice because it um, has very good thermal properties. It doesn't get so hot like teak, and it feels very nice and soft under your feet, and it um, is very good non-slip. And they've done a beautiful job with uh, laying it. You'll see throughout the boat, it's, uh, it, it looks really good. See up in the foredeck area, up here. So, starting at the, at the back, you can see there's a handrail here, and these two sockets um, in the deck here are for a carbon fibre swim ladder that just drops in there. We keep it, it folds, and then when you bring it out, you just drop it in, and you've got a beautiful wide swim ladder, which is ideal for taking dive gear and everything off. Um, this one here is for the boarding uh, gangway, so when the gangway can go on either side of the boat, and there's just a pin that drops in, and then the carbon fibre gangway sits out the back and this is obviously the top of the, the the rudder bearing and you can put an emergency tiller steering in here if you've if you ever needed to um I'll, I'll show you the engine room later but basically these stairs here are the uh, this uh, hatch is where you get access to the engine room um the boat's uh, fully kitted out for all the safety equipment as you would expect and it's obviously the horseshoe ring there very big oversized cleats massive oversized winch yeah. ah it's okay uh, so this is for the Code Zero, so when you're sailing with uh, the Code Zero and that you can use this winch, but you can also um, lead, I think you've got the davits also lead to here, don't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Use the, the davit to lift the dinghy, that's right here. Yeah. It's just really easy. Yeah, so you can see what's going on. It's all oversized, like everything on this boat that Oliver built, it's um, a lot bigger than you would normally see. So see the, the main sheet traveller and um, either side here we've got this uh, lightweight purchase just to stop the boom banging around when you're at sea or if you're just motoring. Um, either side there's a little mast with uh, a light and uh, courtesy flags and then you've got uh, the TV on one side and the internet uh, domes on the other so you're fully connected wherever you go. And that's your shore power is it? Shore power, having both sides. Yeah. Yeah, nice, nice fitting. Now you've got all the covers on at the moment, but normally the the cockpit's completely open around here. The guys are doing uh, cleaning and little touch-up jobs on the boat today. Um, the boat is uh, absolutely uh, beautiful. It's it's finished in every respect. So I'll take you for a walk up over the up onto the fore deck area. So I've got these stairs up here. The little pod here, just by, by the way, is, is to help protect the helmsman. So when you're sailing fast, it pushes the wind and the spray over the top of your head, um, which can be quite an issue on very high-speed boats. But it means that when you're steering the boat, you've got um, amazing vision because you're sitting out wide down low, and it's, it's a really nice dinghy-like place to sail from. Um, carbon fibre dagger boards. Now, they... Um, have a, a system in, inside this locker here for raising and lowering. Show you. Okay, so there's the line driver winch. There's an electric motor attached to that, and basically the dagger boards just go up and down with the, the flick of a switch. Yeah, and you can see all the carbon fiber inside. Well, it's a bit hard to see, it's everything black, but uh, everything you touch is super lightweight. Um, carbon fibre rigging, of course, um, as well. You can see all the carbon fibre chain plates. Um, that's the entry point for the daggerboard ropes. Now, what's interesting about the daggerboard is that it's asymmetric, meaning it's um, it's flat on the outboard side. A bit, I don't know if you can see it down there. And it's uh, curved, very curved on this, like an aeroplane wing. So, instead of having both daggerboards down when you're going to windward, you only need one down, so you have less drag. And the, and the lift you get off this asymmetrical shape is in, way in advance of anything else that uh, you would normally see on, a, on any other type of daggerboard catamaran. Yeah, you can make it go up and down, sure. So that's it, it's just an electric switch up and down, couldn't be easier. Or push button, very quick. And what's great about the system is that you can do it under high loads as well. Yeah, you can see the shape of it much better now. 
little pad eye on the top for lifting it in and out of the boat. Now he has two other dagger boards that he made just in case these ones ever broke. So they're, they're packaged up in boxes ready to be sent anywhere in the world that he would need them if he needed them. And you'll see they're angled um, out 10 degrees. This is so that uh, when the boat starts pushing onto these dagger boards, it pushes the boat to windward so you point even higher than ones that are just straight up and down. Um, all around the bottom here, you can see my foot, the, this big tow rail. So you're always safe inside the boat. There's no, um, and, and also the water doesn't run off the boat, which leaves all these ugly water stains um, when you're at anchorage. So if you look very carefully, we have, um, the water just all goes out the back there when, it, uh, when you get a big wave across the boat. All the hatches, uh, everything, just like this one, a, a, a flush fitting, so there's nothing really to kick, but apart from these solar vents, which are always getting a bit of air down and to below. Here's uh, the bow storage locker for keeping a lot of the gear. Um, you can see there's some sails in here, there's carbon fibre steps to get down to the bottom, and everything is so beautifully thought out and put together. Um, it's just a dream. See all the ropes hanging up in there. The uh, compressor also is here. Yeah, okay, so this is where the dive compressor has kept as well. So this full set of dive gear on the boat and dive compressor, um, which is really amazing. Well, great for diving. All the way up to the bow, and um, it's a little bit hard to see from here, but the bows go a lot further forward than what you see because of the angle. And like I said, there's a lot of buoyancy up front, so you can push this boat very hard into waves, and the height of the bow above the water means you just glide over the waves instead of hitting them. So it feels very nice when you're sailing and it's very um, safe as well. This black rope here is just the bridle for the anchor. So when you drop the anchor, you, you clip that onto the chain and it stops the boat sailing around at the mooring so much. And this of course is the anchor. You can see it's a beautiful polished stainless steel bit of engineering, <laughs> German precision. Um, these are the, the, the staysail halyard just here. You can see there's a two to one purchase on the, on the base. So it was actually four to one because there's another purchase back there. And um, so that you can tension up the luff of the staysail on the halyard. It's all racing gear on here. So you'll see a lot of dog bones, which are all these type of fittings. All rope soft lashing so they don't fatigue and they don't uh, wear out like metal fittings. Much lighter also. And the same for up on the on the very bowsprit here for the Code Zero. You can see the two to one purchase and the um, uh, carbon rigging for the, the bob stay. You don't actually need those. He put them on as an extra item. They don't actually even need to be on the boat. But as with Oliver, if everything he made everything overkill. Very strong. What are these here? This is uh, for the anchor. Ah, okay, so this is the and anchor control size. here. Yeah. And also you have there in the, with the, the panel seat, you know, and also you have the remote controller. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you've got tow controls here for the anchor winch, so you operate them from over here rather than on the bowsprit. But that's good from here because you can actually see the anchor as it drops down, so it's very easy to control the anchor going up and down. Very nice job done on the trampolines. They're um, all beautifully laced up and uh, very strong looking and over here in this locker bow locker you see we've got some of the storage here again but uh, is there anything up in here that's um, different to the other side apart from the dive compressor uh, no this is uh, just storage no, 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 yeah. no that's yeah. just we have the black water tank there okay. this one is a black water tank it's really high yeah. it's good because you can empty just for gravity you know you don't need pumps yeah Okay. What's the, is that a? This is a, the water, fresh water. Fresh water. Yeah. So can you can put, just plug in. The deck or you have a bank, one here, one there. You can connect the, so. the pipe and clean the deck with yeah. fresh water. Okay, that's great. And over here, of course, we have the, all the, um, the winch for all the tensioning of the, the, the free-flying head saw. So um, you'll see we've got... Um, uh, the, the staysail um, tack line and then you've got uh, looks like the jib furler which is a, a manual one 
and then you've got the code zero at the end of the bowsprit. They all come back to the winch here so you can stand on the deck and uh, use everything um, quite easily. Now the um, anchor chain uh, goes back inside the boat, so I'll show you that when we get inside. All right, we'll just pop up here to the cabin top. So here are all the solar panels. Now I was talking to Esteban about it yesterday and um, they never ever use the generator. They get more than enough power for running all the systems on the boat without ever having to, to run the generator. In fact, they, they, they often are turning the, the solar panels off. So now we have today, this morning we push us uh, the half on from eight to 10. Yeah. And we are again at 99% and we must shoot off everyone. Yeah. That's great. The self-tacking uh, headsail track. So it's a two to one purchase and, the, and all the sheets go back to the to the cockpit. And they swap over to the windward side so you can do everything from the helm position without having to go to leeward. I don't know if you can see the finish on the boat, but it's fantastic. It's just, it's just like a car finish. It's uh, really beautiful. As, as good as any super yacht. It's much better if you work on the, on the panel. On the panel, yeah. It can be sleek, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's much Okay, so when we're looking at the wing mast here, obviously this rotates, so if you can look very carefully here, you'll see the white line going through here. So that, this, one. This, this one here um, goes back uh, to the cockpit. Uh, yeah, go there to the cockpit. So you just adjust it all from the cockpit. It's all balanced, um, so it's reasonably easy to rotate. But what's, what's great about when you look at this rig, it's a full race rig spec, and there's a, there's a few details that you should know. Um, the first one is that you, when the sail comes down off the back of the wing mast, there's two tracks here. So, as the as the cars come down, they go to each side of of the of the mast, and it lowers the height of the sail stack sitting on the boom. Because if you had it all in one line, the sail would end up quite high up the mast. And, and if you look how how low down it is, it's right at uh, waist to chest chest height the sail. So it's it's incredibly easy to to reach everything that's uh, going on here. It's a nice wide Park Avenue carbon boom and uh, high-tech sails of course and all the high-tech uh, ropes and blocks and everything all brace boat technology and one of the things that's uh was very cool only came out just when this boat was just before it got launched these special headboard designs for square top mainsails because of the the top batten halt goes out at 45 degrees they came up with this really ingenious car system so that when you pull the halyard the headboard here slides along the rope and drops in here and then as the halyard ha goes up, that goes up and locks it in place. And yet when you drop the sail, it all just drops down onto the boom. And as soon as the load's off it, it allows the top batten to lay down flat like you see it. Uh, it's only a little simple thing, but boy, we used to have so many problems in the old days with um, top, top uh, battens on the mainsails. Now the little winding um, rope, or is it rubber or rope that's around the stays? It's a rope. It's yeah. The vibration, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So he's put those in all the stays because what happens, you get a harmonicking sound when you're sailing very fast. And by putting the, the rope uh, all the way around the stays, it just breaks up the air that makes this vibration noise. I haven't actually seen it in practice. Does it work? Does yeah, it works really well. Okay, really, good. Really, really well. Because it's not there when you, are, when you have a lot of wind or sail fast, you, heal, you can uh, hear, you know, the yeah we make a resonance you know yeah yeah the resonance is quite strong does, fix it fix it yeah also, yeah also when you are anchor and sleeping at night and it's 20 or something yeah and in the beginning we feel it you know you it's all the carbon fiber you feel yeah the, the resonance yeah. the resonation and now it's and now this has fixed it yeah yeah i remember talking about it with oliver a long time ago so it's the first time i've seen it yeah, there's no spreaders on the mast. You can see the radar that's uh, sticking out. So there's just a good mid-mast uh, control um, so that it stops the middle of the mast pumping when uh, you're in a seaway. Uh, but it's an incredibly strong overkill mast section. Um, but beautiful, beautifully made. You look at all the gear on it and uh, the, the ways of, of doing everything. It's just the latest technologies. The little... Um, lever at the bottom uh, is what measures the um, mast rotation and I imagine that's to help calibrate some of the instruments so you first of all you know the degree that the mast is rotated and at the same time it can help calibrate the radar north, uh, north position 
Yeah, so there's for the overlapping heads also, it sheets back here. And for this sail here, this is what you use in the light winds the most, and it really gets the boat up and going. It's what be my favourite sail, I think, just about. <laughs> and of course, you can see at the back the uh, radar, and then on that side, the uh, sorry, the radar, that's the TV, and then on that side is the uh, internet. Pretty hot day here today, I must yeah. be there. They see every detail of the boat is just beautifully done. It's um, the quality is just outstanding. And if you look at all the things like all the pad eyes, everything's just a bit overkill to what we would normally spend, given that the way Oliver is about everything on the boat. Here's a filler for the waste tank. And again, uh, here you can see there's obviously a vent just there, a big pad eye for jack stays. So when you're sailing offshore, you can put your jack stays onto that. So this is the helm position. And from in here, you've got a carbon fiber hood, which sort of protects it and helps keep the sun off uh, everything so you can read the instruments with great, great clarity. Now the boat's fully tickled with all you need. It's uh, it's got all the um, wind instruments and chart plotters and everything, plus some backups as well. Uh, there's the twin engines, and you can control the engine throttle from either side. There's a switch that allows you to choose um, one helm position or the other. That'll be your dagger boards up and down, your bow thruster, compass. But it's all relatively simple, but uh, it's all there, so it's really great. So when you're sailing the boat, um, you're down low, you, you can look up and see the rig and uh, and you really feel like you're sailing a performance machine. And you can look right down this, the side of the hull and, uh, when you're maneuvering coming into the dock. And so this is uh, one of the cockpits. So out here is just for when everybody is um, uh, enjoying the sailing with you. You can all sit out here in the sun or pop inside to the massive uh, saloon. So in here we have, uh, this is the main sheet. So Oh, that's just the tra oh, the main sheet, not the traveller, it's just the main sheet. Yeah. Yeah, so Oliver's, like I said, done everything as a manual boat. So you can sit in this helm position here, and opposite, this is the main um, heli winch. So you'll find that uh, a lot of the helis, you can read them here. So you got your Genoa sheet, then you got your main halyard and Cunningham, Reef 3, boom topping lift, main halyard jib and the mast rotation so one person um, well organized can basically sail everything from from this one position and in here we is where we store all the ropes so there's a huge locker so when you're sailing instead of having ropes just lying around all the cockpit you can coil them and, and toss them into the, the bin ready to be used um, yeah, again there's the the switch for the for the um, electric winches just there now this one doesn't have, uh, it's not electric is it? No, this is a manual this is manual. One. But there, yeah. there's not much adjustment in the sheet of the sail. You're probably yeah. only between full in and full out, it's probably a metre and a half at the most, or two metres. Yeah. It's uh, very small. Uh, obviously there's the hose for the boat. Everything's heavy duty, oversized, as you'd expect from Oliver. And oh, we'll look in the engine room on the other side. Be easy. Oh, we'll go into the... the yeah. room. Yeah, have a look on the okay. other side. So this this is the the place where I love, and I think uh, you would just love to be owning because you can seat a, about uh, you know twenty people if you had to for dinner. Oh, and I just uh, I was just putting the lid back on, but I was just going to sh show uh, the the barbecue and teppanyaki. So you have the choice here of um, how you want to cook. You have a grill, and then you have a hot plate, and then you have the element here, which is a obviously electric element. Uh, those switches are pop-up switches that make uh, nice lighting, the surround sound uh, throughout the cockpit and lighting and mood lighting and of course all the covers roll up so they um, are like like that so most of the time in good weather you can uh, um, have them up but when they roll down they're all be beautifully clear tight and um, you can see through them which you can't say that about a lot of a lot of the boats very good upholstery and uh, very very comfortable now we're going to go over and uh, have a look in the engine room. But uh, this, this, this place here is just, uh, just a fantastic place to enjoy your day.
Okay, so two, in, two ways of getting into the engine room. This is directly above the engine. So you can see the whole engine room is uh, insulated. It, uh, you can see the carbon fiber bulkheads everywhere, but um, there's your uh, water lock, the engine, um, your filters, just here, everything's designed to be accessible and easy to get at, and there's your, your, your hot water cylinder as well. I won't go through it all right now, but eventually um, Esteban will be showing you where everything is. But there's you know, twin fuel filters. You know, all these things are um, commercial uh, installations. We go aft. Feel a bit better here. And of course the steering system, which is quite unusual. Well, not unusual really, it's, um, it's, a, it's a solid link bar. So these bars all connect to these universal joints and you can see the shaft there. So when you turn the rudder here, it's got a very frictionless system that connects one side of the boat to the other and to the helm station. Well, th these are quite hard things to do in catamarans because um, you, um, but as far as I know, I haven't sailed this particular boat, but I've sailed this system before. They're, they're pretty good, and the fact that uh, you, you, you sail with um, hyd um, hydraulic uh, water helm, which is 80% you know, of the time, it's, um, it's a really neat system. It's beautifully engineered. Uh, you can see all the carbon fibre, so it's all been, back here, it's, it's all been left uh, just clear varnished, all the carbon. You can see all the laminate layers around the, the heavy loaded uh, bulkheads and, and the beautiful workmanship that went into um, the construction of this boat. It's really top rate. Right. We have here also the water maker there. Yep. And the water heater. Yeah, so you can see the yeah, you can see the water heater there and then yeah, if you look right up there there's the water maker. Um, you can see the filters all easy to get at and change and uh, flush out. It's all nicely installed. Good system. Yeah, 75 horsepower um, sail drives, just so you know. Okay. By the way, I should point out that the river is really a very nice one. 25 horsepower, a little plane, very fast with uh, four people or more. And um, it's like brand new, the whole thing. Oh, you can't really see it right now, but at night, if you come here at night, there's all these lights, little, you can just see them uh, everywhere, but it's got discrete lighting throughout the whole boat on the outside, so you, you don't uh, get blinded by bright lights. It's really nice. And also, underneath the boat, there's all these... Um, underwater light so at night you can turn all the lights on all the fish come around the boat and it's super nice to see okay so just go and sit over here so i can show you the entry door so each side of so this is obviously the the main lounge really except if it's too cold and you want to be inside there's two carbon fiber doors that slide either side and if you look up in the ceiling there there's a massive uh, flat screen tv that folds down so yeah you can open it on and so fundamentally you, you can all sit out here and put a movie on and, and watch it from in the cockpit it's uh, oliver's invention of course and also you can watch it from inside the saloon as well so it um can pivot around uh, 180 degrees so you can watch from here or watch from inside the saloon one of his ideas yeah yeah that's cool okay thanks So when we're standing on the on the on the cabin sole here, it's actually the bridge deck structure itself. Because of those uh, structures we had running fore and aft underneath the bridge deck, it um, supports the floor without having to have a second sole uh, raise and losing headroom inside the boat. Okay, so Valeria's at the. Okay. 
<laughs> no, there he is, uh, just showing us. This is the, the main lounge inside the boat. So obviously it's uh, quite a big place for dining and what have you. And throughout the boat, they've got a safari theme going on with um, lots of bits and pieces. And you can, you can see a little bit now what I talk about with the interior finishing. He's just basically varnished all the carbon, but not polished it. It's, uh, it could be made much nicer if it was um, you know, polished all smooth, but he's left it sort of rough finished. And the same for the cabin. It's got a, a headline that's just glued directly to the structure rather than your normal uh, headliner, which sits off the cabin. These um, big troughs here is what all the ropes come from, from the mast. So when, this is the mast post here, so all the halyards come down where all the bolts are, and they go through the channels uh, to, the, to the winch at the back. Uh, it's all very easy to understand, but it's just not the sort of finish that, uh, you know, I'd probably put on a, a, you know, a super yacht like this. You can see all the bolts here for all the turning blocks on the other side as well. Now, the good thing about the boat, of course, is that everything is easily and instantly accessible. Like, um, you know, these panels here you can open up and you can see all the wiring behind and all the, all the fuses and switchboard. And uh, everything is very easy to get at. Yeah. Yep, so it's all, he designed it all so he can get it instantly without any, any haste at all. And every part he made himself, every every door, every everything. Same over here. This is the main switchboard that tells you everything that's going on. All the lights come on when something switched on. All the switches for the lights and systems throughout the boat. And here you can see the. Yeah. So this tells us exactly yeah. what's going on with the electricity. Exactly. Um, current and capacities. Yes, well, seriously, you know, you have here is the battery, it's 94 percent. This is the DC power, 250 now, and this is the solar panel, it's a 430. The loads is nothing at the moment because we have the inverter off, just you put on the inverter and you have 220 in all the boat, easy. On you can go to the other side and you have the charger, you know, just in yeah. case you run the generator, yeah. And then also here you have another panel. You can see right. the battery is 94 percent. We are charging now uh, just, just six amperes, and we are using uh, three, uh, 37. Yeah. You know, with this we are we have now the just one solar panel on. Yeah. The rest is everything off. Yeah. It's just fantastic system, isn't it? And you got total control over it, and you know exactly where everything's at. Now, um, the galley is again is a is a custom made job. It's um, has its own electric cooktop, so there's no gas on the boat. Um, four big fridge drawers, um, two freezer, one, uh, two, two fridge probably. Well, I know this brand and we use it on, we specify it on all our designs. It's uh, really good equipment. And then uh, over here we have, uh, there's a rubbish bin in the corner, so you can uh, take out the whole thing or just the lid to put some rubbish in. Sink unit, yeah. Big extraction over overhead. But, I mean, the galley is all quite unconventional, but it's certainly uh, and, and this is you know Oliver's uh, creation. And we'll, we'll take you up for it in a minute. But this is the inside helm position. So from in here, with the auto helm, you can steer the boat and stand a watch. And uh, it's not set up for sailing. If you had hydraulic functions, you could actually sail the boat from inside here. But um, it's this is certainly a great place to come and spend a, a night at a watch it even has its own day bed on the other side so um you know you can have a nap there if you want to all right we'll just drop down this i've got nice wide uh, stairways under the steps here is those escape hatches so the worst ever happened uh, you can uh, lift these up and uh, i'll show you Oh, okay, no it doesn't. The escape hatch is further up. <laughs> it's just the inverter. Yeah, really. Okay, but it's nice and easy access. I thought it was there. Yeah, this is one of the aft uh, uh, cabins. Um, so it has a hatch that you can open directly above the, the bed to let in some more air. Um, quite important because there's no air conditioning on this boat. Um, 
So this shows uh, one of the, the steering um, uh, bars that I was telling you about that connect uh, the solid steering to the helm position. Wardrobe, and then you have these uh, sliding doors, which um, I won't open, but they're, they're quite nice. They've got these inlaid uh, bits of glass with EOS written on them, all made in the factory with Oliver. And you go forward. Um, just so you know, all these hatches here open up, so you've got access to the bilge and the tanks that all sit um, underneath uh, the bilge here, water and fuel tanks. So, right. <laughs> this is the their uh, African theme, we can see all around all the mirrors. <laughs> this is the daggerboard case, so on the other side, and a little shelf. So it's, it's all relatively simple, but it all works and it's um, it's ready to go. They, uh, everything is kept open so that the air is circulating. The bathroom forward is quite huge, it has uh, twin hand basins, uh, and then directly forward is the large shower with a rain shower. Tech grade. Carbon fibre toilet, of course, super lightweight. But everything's sort of open and exposed, as is Oliver's um, philosophy for building the boat, so you can access everything and see everything. Nice. So the uh, escape hatch is under here, this one? No, it's in the room. Oh, is it? I always sort of just the forward. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll have a look on the other side. Okay, so that forward here, you can see this is the uh, helm position. I'll go sit, sit in it. Yeah, so very good visibility from here. And of course, uh, the boat has its uh, iMac for uh, all the boat. Uh, systems and that I, I'm not exactly sure what's being connected to this, but what software, but uh, certainly for your onboard office and everything else, it's um, it's all set ready to go. Plenty of leg room underneath, and in here, of course, this is where the anchor um, comes to. So, uh, that's the right one, yeah. yeah. There's your anchor winch, you can see a stainless steel cha chain that doesn't rust. Hopefully, and uh, you can see there's a hose there for cleaning the chain, I would imagine. And the board here with water, fresh yeah. water, yeah, yeah. From, the, from the tanks. Yeah, so you can, uh, through the rollers there, you can just, if there's anything that comes through, it all drains out the bottom there. Yeah. And it keeps all the anchor weight, um, of all the chain, right back in the centre of gravity, so the boat pitches this, because what you don't want is all the anchor chain sitting up in the very bow of the boat. Yeah, and this is uh, Oliver's favourite spot. Yeah, and this is a, a big piece of engineering, this thing. It carries all the loads of the masts all sitting on this, down into this uh, main bulkhead structure. There's a lot going on in this. this I, I hate to think how much this particular bulkhead and, and mast post cost, but it would have been a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of carbon in there. But it's what allows you to have a boat that's strong enough to fly a hull and uh, take all the loads that you can throw at it. Alrighty, hey, go to the other hull. Ah, right, so there's the escape hatch. Well, that's quite good because uh, I forgot it was here. The, um, you can open it and let a lot more air come into the aft cabin, which is always good. And uh, they used to have, well, they still have, uh, they had two, uh, two dogs that they cruise everywhere with on the boat, so they seem to be pretty happy from all accounts. I don't know what that filter is doing there. What's that filter for? This is a filter for the, the water from the, the toilet. Ah, okay. Okay, so we have an identical aft cabin over here. Pretty much the same as what you see. Hatch around there. You can see up there to the electric winch um, for the cockpit. And we have access to the panel here. 
get the steering behind the um, helm station so you can see the joint system there and some electrical wires. So everything is quite, quite accessible. Oh, worry, sorry, you can yeah, it's a clip on one. Um, there's a bit of a theme going throughout the boat with these round portholes, it's the name EOS on it. I guess this is the giraffe toilet. Oh no, zebra toilet, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, so another carbon fiber toilet and all the piping exposed and easy to see. You know, you can turn valves on and off here for pumping out waste tanks and what have you, I would imagine, or just reconnecting. There's a bit to learn with how everything goes together, of course, but uh, you can see, and there's the manual bilge pump. Yeah, you can see it going up there. Yeah, as is all throughout the boat, everything is exposed. You can see the vents, blowing a bit of air through there. Another Oliver carbon made hand basin mirror. And then here's the washing machine, that's right. Okay. Yeah, you see it's one of these um, specifically designed for boats and caravans, I think. I'm not sure what that is. A micro machine. A what? Micro oh, oh, vacuum, okay. Little vacuum cleaner. Mm. And linen storage underneath. Yeah. And of course the door uh, works both ways. It closes here and it also... So here we have the twin berth cabin, um, one up and one down, and lots of storage underneath uh, both of them. The bows are getting obviously quite narrow up in this part of the boat, but um, by using the height, he managed to get a, a pretty reasonable single berth up there. You see all the structures from the, you know, the, the strength of the boat, all the ring frames and what have you. And then we've pretty much got an identical shower um, set up over here with the rain shower. And Great, another carbon fiber toilet. Yep. Right, and that's about it, really. Um, let's have a look in the bulge. see one of the tanks there with all the all the takeoffs that go to the uh, various parts of the boat. What's interesting about all the floorboards so they don't creak and make noises and that they're all stuck down on velcro so when you stand on them they're not making lots yeah, of noises. The, the batteries need lithium batteries. Oh, okay and so there's some lithium ion batteries. Which are, two here and two on the other side. Yeah I mean these, these are the heart of the electrical system. The ability to discharge and then charge quickly it's um, really lifts the whole boat into another another era. Is that another inverter under here or? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, another Victron, yeah. Yeah. All beautifully laid out. Yeah, so that's um pretty much the boat as it is today and uh, um, yeah apart from going sailing there's probably not much more I can show you um, as I say the interior is something we can do something with but I wouldn't touch the exterior I think it's fantastic and uh, you know as you can see the quality of the boat everywhere is really quite 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 something there's your all-important CE inspection and of course the uh, designer logo <laughs> There's a couple of aerials there. And those are those big boxes where the, all the aliens go through to uh, the mast area. Anyway, I'll turn it off now and uh, say goodbye, guys. Goodbye. And I uh, hope we see you soon. See Cheers. You soon, yeah.